with synthetic cannabis that's quite similar to alcohol, so they both make you feel nice and sleepy. But if, if I don't get a smoke for a couple of days, then my lungs, they, they feel like they're seizing up. You just have a very irritable feeling. And psychologically, you are just really wanting to get some synthetics. I've known about five friends that have died of it. That's um, affecting a lot of lives. It's not something that New Zealand has seen before. The synthetics is destroying West Auckland, like, not just people, but like the community, everything. This is the main area where we used to smoke. It's nice to see little kids running through here, spewing up, just seizuring in the middle of the road on this roundabout here. I uh, found a woman actually blacked out over here. She was knocked out, pale, um, unresponsive, and I actually had to pick her up myself and carry her to my mum's house. There's another house where I used to school from just down over here, uh, just down on this left street. They used to sell the good shit, which uh, made people want more. Synthetics is a real big problem to West Auckland. Uh, there's a lot of houses out here that sell it. There's a lot of people walking around, come up, they'll come up to you, bro, wanna buy a bag, you know, stuff like that. West Aucklanders ain't afraid to try anything. They'll try anything and whatever, just to get a hit. Stop having kids and don't fucking look after. No, this is not for you, this is for me. Ah! Don't you bite. Fucking little shit. That's why I don't associate with these birds. They're assholes. I was 13 when, like, I started synthetics. Well, first of all, like, it came out in the shops and stuff. And I thought that, oh, it was just, it was yucky. It didn't really do anything for me. And... Yeah, like I used to mock the shit out of them, like the other cunts down in Henderson, like, oh my God, just smoke the real shit, bro. Like, you're so stupid, that shit's just gonna fuck up your brain. This shit was actually way cheaper than weed and had much more of like an effect. So that's how I got into smoking it. I don't know, I was going through so much then, I just needed it to cope. I've, like, yeah, I've been smoking it for, for pretty much six years straight. The government's to blame. They're the only people to blame. Why bring a drug out and have it legalised so widely, put it in so many shops and put it around the whole entire country and then get all these people addicted to it, like, actually fucking addicted, and then just take it away and make it illegal? Of course it's going to go underground and then people are going to start making shit that is harmful and that's what's happened. I'd smoke probably an ounce of synthetics in two days. That's every week. I was real bad. I'm surprised I'm still alive. It felt like a hand was trying to reach up my throat and out my mouth. I guess my body couldn't handle the amount of chemicals it was getting. And it was making me like regurgitate, sort of kind of spew, but I wasn't spewing. It was, kind of, it was a dry spew, kind of like someone was putting their hand out my mouth. I actually kind of seized it first, started frothing at the mouth, and then I blacked out. And that's where my mum came running in. Yeah, I woke up in the hospital, um, not realising where I was or what I've done. and. Um, and my mum came up to me crying, saying, you almost died, son, you know? I found you basically half dead in the bathtub, just lying there pale, speechless, just real, you know, not responsive. So I rushed you to the hospital, son, and you're lucky to be alive. That's all she said to me. Middlemore ED receiving. Have a for your old male. Keep the plane being collapsed. What brings people to the emergency department, what we're seeing nowadays, um, usually is seizures. 
The seizures are, are common. People come in with a problem, they come in with chest pain, they come in with seizures, etc. We don't always know what that is. So we start working down the list of what can cause that. But now we've seen so many seizures from synthetic cannabinoids that that's one thing we always just consider. That's at the list where, where we thought about synthetic cannabinoids. These things have been around since 2007, 2008. This was started in a medical pharmaceutical laboratory for research. Now it's kind of gone to underground labs all over the world, and there is no quality control. AMB Fubinaco, this is one that we've seen recently. It's about 60 to 70 times more potent than natural cannabis. You know, they take this chemical and they mix it in your water, dissolve it, and they'll get grass or hay or whatever that's dried. They'll lay down on the table and they'll spray this on there. Well, what if the person who's spraying this gets distracted and maybe they spray this section for 10 seconds longer than this section? And all of a sudden you've got an incredibly potent pack of synthetics that are going to go out and cause really bad harm. She did actually start off as a very, very lovely child. And she's still a lovely child underneath. She ended up getting into ice skating. She did very well at ice skating. It was one thing that she was absolutely good at. She said it's her one place that she was always calm. It was a place that she felt safe. Once she lost that, there was a big change in her life. So then she took up with the locals around Henderson, the wrong sorts. We could never do much about that, unfortunately. My week has been absolutely shook. I had these people, they're supposed to be helping me intertwine in, into the community. And they seem to think that they can provide me a counsellor, which I've already got. You're like five years too late, bro. Like, why are you trying to do this now? What do you want? Oh, this better not be fucking prison mail. I'm off to see Alma and sort her out, okay? Oh, speaking of the fucking devil. Oh my god. I hate it when people use animals to manipulate me. Just put the little cat there and pictures of cats down there. Like, how evil is that? Fucking, hey Tamara, I hope you're doing okay. I haven't seen you in a little while, giving you some space. I hope you understand that it's done out of care for you and the best in your best interests. It was a hard decision to make, but we knew it would be a enable you to have some time from drugs and then hopefully remain drug free. But why write me a fucking letter? Are you that scared to come to my fucking house? You must have fucked up, eh? Hey? So I'm glad she admitted it there, that she's the one that fucking put me in a mental hospital. So again, you know, I'm glad she hasn't come around because I'm going to smack her face in now. I had no other fucking choice. They put me in a fucking mental hospital, man. What was I supposed to do? Just actually let them win and go crazy? You lying fucking cunt. <sighs> See, they wonder why I don't trust these fucking services. Synthetics is easier to get than, like, than crack, man. You just gotta know the right people. I had a 13 week stand down from work and income. The only access I had to money was that I knew it would sell because it had just been taken off the shelves. So I got 
to get a little couple of people and um, found a big lot of it and just started selling it. Oh, I had like, quite a few customers every day. Yeah, I'd have a line of people at my front door. I made quite a bit of money. I was all good every week. I was I managed to pay rent, put power on, eat, buy clothes. It wasn't until the cops found a big pile of it that I stopped. That was probably the only reason that I did stop selling it. There was a period of time where synthetic cannabis was legal. It was then made illegal under the Psychoactive Substances Act. The importation or the manufacturing of a psychoactive substance has a penalty of two years in prison. In terms of selling a psychoactive substance, it's a three month penalty or a $40,000 fine. The police have worked with New Zealand Customs on an importation where there was just over a thousand grams of synthetic drugs imported into New Zealand that has a potential street value of one million dollars. We utilise a wide range of techniques that we are trained to look out for and these ones stood out to me so we'll um, open them up and examine them and see what we've got. The x-ray image looked inconsistent, it's sent as express mail out of Hong Kong. We find predominantly China is one of the big providers of synthetic uh, cannabinoids. And now what I would do is I would use one of my tools that can test substances. It's got a, a library of over 11,000 different substances and both illegal and not illegal and it can test it through the clear bag so it's all contained and tell me what this is. And this has come back for ADB Fubinaka which is a synthetic cannabinoid. Yeah. It's a free leash park, my babe, so not breaking any laws. Since the last time I seen you, it's like I found the man. It's good that there's another dog around, or two other dogs, because he stays with them. Yeah. And if they listen, he'll just follow them. From the moment I saw tomorrow, I kind of, I don't know, you know, I had this feeling that she was the one that I could settle down with. The first night I met her and then when I left her house, I said to my brother's partner, I said to her, I think I just found my Bonnie, you know, like Bonnie Clyde back in the 1920s, 30s, whatever. It is moving quickly, but I like it, you know, I love it. Where we are at the moment is good. Um, I wouldn't change nothing. I wouldn't change nothing. Maybe the only thing will be just to keep her off synthetics. That's probably about it. I worry about her relapsing. Is when I'm not there, or you know, there's no one there to help her when she does have those, those, all those urges to want to go back there. No, I think about it. I wouldn't even like him to like me on synthetics. Every time I'm like, the sunny cone would be so good right now. He's like, nah, nah, fuck that babe, nah. You know, once it's on the street, it's hard to get off, you know? Like, there's millions of synthetics out there now while I'm talking, and there's no way to get it off the streets. It's just like a sickness going around. I met Devontae when I was 16, we played rugby together, went to school together, found out a little bit about him and his mum told me about him, he told me his struggle, you know, he wanted to get away from all the stuff down there so he came up to Auckland to even worse place, you know, full of drugs, bad people. He was a real good fella, you know, he was bubbly and humble, he just loved doing good. I made this little setup for him because he would have wanted it. Um, this is actually his little uh, board thingy, you know, he made this little signature which I don't want to forget so I decided to put it on this little memorial. But this one is the specialist because when he was little he got baptised and uh, his mum 
uh, kept this from uh, since she was little and um, sort of gave it to me. She gave me the responsibility, basically look after it, keep it special, close to me. Yeah. Um, he was actually at my house the night before he passed away, and um, him and my mum had an argument because um, he was smoking that shit in my wash house, and my mum didn't like it, so she told him to go home. I told him, all right, bro, I'll see you tomorrow. And he goes, yeah, I'll be over tomorrow. And I go, okay. Woke up, waiting for him, and I was realising, why is he taking so long? And my mum comes out in tears, and I, I kind of knew what happened. I kind of knew. But then when she told me, I just, you know, I felt it. I really did. It was hard. There's a physiological addiction to these synthetic cannabinoids as well as a psychological addiction. In this time, I've relapsed. That's so sad that I can't say that anymore. Like, oh yeah, oh no, I've been clean like eight weeks now. That's so shit. Like, I reckon the shit that they do got out, like, now, compared to, like, a couple of months ago or whatever, when I was smoking it, and I, it has gotten stronger, definitely. And I reckon, like, more addictive, too. Like, all I could think about was just having another cone, having another cone, and, like, waiting for him to go to sleep so I could have a cone. No, nah, yeah, that was, that was a really big fuck-up, what I did. They're relapsing. Wish I did things a little bit differently and like was just a little bit stronger earlier. And like, yeah, but no, I wouldn't say I regret anything because like that makes me the person that I am today. Yeah. And I wouldn't be this fucking ray of sunshine. <laughs>